Hello and welcome to The Beaver Pod. This podcast is where current insurance industry challenges are discussed ahead of Beaver Conference 2024. The conference theme is What's Next? And in this series, we'll be interviewing insurance professionals shaping our future as an industry. Hello and welcome to Bieber Pod, the first of the new series in the lead up to Bieber Conference 2024. We have a huge topic uh, to talk about and uh, Joe and Eleanor, I'm really excited to hear from you. Before we jump into uh, the topic of AI and how it will change our industry, um, I wonder if you might just introduce yourselves, who you are, what you do, a little bit about your background. Eleanor, do you want to start? First of all, thank you so much for inviting us along. Um, really delighted to be here. So yeah, so my name is Eleanor Brody. I'm a data science manager with LexisNexis Risk Solutions. Um, my team is focused on the UK and Ireland market. Um, we help our customers unlock the value of our data. And so we help them incorporate our data into their workflows. Um, we also look at new data sources. We build new features that can be included in AI and machine learning models uh, by insurers and brokers. Um, we also build industry predictive models. So for example, our cancellation model that can predict whether a customer is likely to cancel their motor insurance policy early. Um, and so all of, our, all of our models and features are designed with the UK insurance market in mind. Data science is one of those incredibly scary <laughs> terms. Uh, and you guys are right at the, the kind of cutting edge of what's going on from an AI perspective. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to hearing about that. Joe, tell me a little bit about what you do and your background. Yeah, hi, Sarah. Thank you. Um, I am the Chief Innovation Data Science and Technology Officer for Fortegra. Fortegra is a, a carrier, a delegated authority carrier. We're very excited to be back at Viva this year. Uh, for the second year in a row, and we hear that it's going to be bigger and better than ever. So looking forward to meeting folks and talking about AI and underwriting and writing new programs. Where are we going with it? Can you guys tell me about, perhaps maybe we start with you, Joe, what, what changes are you seeing in the insurance industry as a result of AI? And what are you guys doing in your business? Yeah, so there's a lot changing across the spectrum of how a, for at least us a carrier operates um, maybe most pertinent to the the crew at biba is how that affects underwriting and, and what happens in our underwriting process and because we're a delegated authority underwriter i think one of the key aspects of what ai is doing was what it's not doing and it's not taking the underwriter out of the equation um, because the coverages and the geographies and the creativity that we sort of focus on in our programs is so broad that we still have sort of the industry expert underwriter as a focus, but then that's supported by kind of more classical machine learning. So this isn't like an automated pipeline that's doing anything. This is just really smart data scientists and actuaries working together using modern data science tools to do things like analyze losses across data sets that are much larger than you typically would have been able to had you just been doing a standard underwriting process or a standard actuarial process. So we're plugging data science into the functions to support them, to help them make better decisions. Oftentimes it talk, we're talking about enriching data. So bringing in external third-party data to help our programs, to help our MGAs um, write better risks when they're out in the market looking for new business. Um, and we often like have to go in and look at a book and figure out how to fix it um, and, and make it better before we write it. And we spend a lot of time in data science looking for ways to make programs better. So that's how underwriting gets affected. And there's obviously the, the entire back office of the insurance company dealing with claims, customer service. Um, and in there, I think you're looking at more of the kind of the the, the traditional things you hear talked about in the media today where there's like an LLM in, embedded in the process and there's a more sort of fluid um, aspect to how a customer might interact with L LLMs or other data science techniques in our platform. So what we're doing in operations is integrating the tool to help smooth and accelerate the process of claims management, claims handling, making sure those insureds have a good experience, making sure our MGAs have a good experience with us when interacting with our claims platform. So what does that look like? There's opportunities on sort of any point that a document might come into a process. And so we all know the insurance industry is document heavy. 
Um, and so everything from FNOL to coverage reviews to understanding like a, a claim and, and an estimate and that sort of thing, we've plugged in many versions of machine learning to help us get out of a human centered approach and more of a human supported approach where a machine does kind of the heavy lifting and the rote work. And we have people then doing kind of the more high end strategic piece and making decisions and understanding how to move a claim forward. Um, and I think that extends through to our MGAs and our partners where if they have documents, we've seen this often already, they have documents where data is locked away and we want to get like an address um, or something simple off that document so that we or many, many documents in most cases, we offer the ability to work with our MGAs and pull data off, structure it, put it into our system, give it back to our MGA so they have it. And there's a lot of collaboration around how to use these data science tools to populate our respective systems and make better decisions and empower people to see the sorts of trends and, and opportunities to be better. I think the, the data has been a buzzword, right? For five, 10 years, everybody talks about big data um, uh, and using data to underpin um, business uh, strategic decisions and services. And what I think you're saying is that AI is predominantly being used across the insurance uh, chain to support human interaction uh, and probably make it better, make it more efficient, but absolutely not to replace. Um, I wonder. That's certainly our uh, that that's certainly our opinion and, and how we're focused. I wonder where you see that going in the next five to ten years. I guess I don't think for our purposes and any time in the near future, we have to think about some generally intelligent tool that could solve any task we point it towards. Um, Cause that's just not the case. Like even with the chat GPTs and the other flavors of LLMs, they don't natively solve complex tasks, like underwriting a program. You can't just go throw it a bunch of sort of ideas and documents and losses and say, hey, tell us whether we should write this program. That takes a human still. We can support the human with a forecast on losses, we can go look for trends within the exposure base. We can do, we can add more data to see how things might be impacted if we wrote a new geography or something like that. But those are discrete tasks. A data scientist will help with some of them um, that you know aren't sort of native to like an underwriting process. But the, we don't, we aren't at a generally useful tool to just handle any insurance task. So each of these discrete units of work you have to kind of build a bespoke tool, even if it's a general LLM like ChatGPT, you still have to box it in and make sure that you're doing the correct prompt engineering and you've engineered a pipeline that makes it respond to only your document. Um, and so you have to find the areas where it's giving you either uplift and efficiency or insights that would take a long time for a human to generate because it's like a really long document to read. We don't put the decision in the hands of the tool we support the human, even something as simple as FNOL, we can automate fully an FNOL coming in and you know getting that first notice of loss, but there's still that last step of a, a person looking at it and just you know hitting submit and making sure that it's been QA'd. Um, and now they can focus on the more complex things that might happen in an FNOL process or making sure our MGAs are in the loop on certain items or getting collecting new documents that might relate to that claim. So it gives us, it gives that team efficiency. We can scale as a firm without having to hire a lot of additional held count, but we aren't taking headcount away from anything. We're letting those folks do their jobs more efficiently. I love that. And I think what underpins all of this um, is the customer journey and how data science is being used um, to that end. Eleanor, this is your uh, kind of bag. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, I guess um, when I think about the customer journey, um, I think all the way across the insurance continuum, right? So you've got you start off with marketing, um, you go on to the customer contact, um, then you look at the quoting experience, uh, then you look at your compliance checks, things like that, and then finally, you know, if the if the customer ends up in the claiming space, you, you go as far as claim. Um, 
So I guess when we look at and when we think about marketing, um, so AI can really help with the segmenting of customers. So if you've got your insurers and your brokers, you've got a particular customer segment that you have in mind. Um, so you can use AI models to actually select the most appropriate segment for the offering that you have. Um, and I guess conversely, on the flip side of that, so say, for example, there are segments, segments that you don't want to target. So are there segments that are more likely to cancel early? Are there segments that are potentially going to engage in some kind of fraudulent activity down the line? AI can help you kind of target and just break up your base like that, um, just so you, you can select the most appro appropriate group for your product. So. I guess not everybody is going to want to be contacted the same way. So AI can help you determine the most appropriate way to contact a customer. So what way do they actually want to be contacted? Would they like to be contacted by phone? Would they like to be contacted by email? Um, what time are they more likely to respond positively? So in the morning, the afternoon, um, that kind of thing. Um, and so then when we go as far as the quote, um, so again, the customer wants to be offered the most appropriate uh, product with the minimal input. Um, and so then here, chatbot assistance can come into play. And by a chatbot, I mean a conversational AI. Um, so here they can take the input information from the customer and they can retrieve the relevant information and then they can return what's called a, a human-like response. Um, and I guess I can see, I, I don't know if anybody listens or has ever read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Anyone read that? Yeah. And I don't know if you remember the babble fish um, where you'd put this fish into your ear and it'd be able to translate the language for you. So it's going to be obviously different with, with uh, the way things are currently. But I, I actually see um, AI speaking to people in their own language, their own dialect. So it's going to be a really human like response. And I, I can see that kind of happening, um, happening in the near future. We can see the flow at each um, interaction, I suppose, um, with the end user and how AI um, can support the human involved in that. What, what do you think will happen in the next five years with the customer journey? So we've had, you know, people speaking in their own language with their own dialect. What other kind of things do you think are likely to happen um, from a customer's perspective? My pres my uh, primary thought is that it's the it's just the expectation has completely changed. Um, so I don't have a crystal ball. I, I can't tell exactly what's going to happen over the next few years. I don't, um, as Joe has said, I, I don't actually see a, a general AI. And by general AI, I mean an AI with kind of human human level intelligence. I don't see that happening in the next five years. But I do see that seamless customer experience happening. So I do see, um, you know, going on and uh, creating a quote for your insurance. I do see all of that pre-populating, all of the data sitting underneath that. So we're talking about seamless customer journey. And I'm thinking of something like Amazon, right? I, oh no, I have to get jazz shoes for my daughter for tomorrow. Open the app, type in jazz shoes. There's the size, deliver by 10 p.m., press a button and it arrives. That is a seamless customer journey. Now, I've had conversations with people in the insurance industry that are building um, IT infrastructure to provide, you know, even that integrates with Amazon and, uh, and, you know, provides a whole host of integrated services. How is what we're talking about now different to that? I go onto a form online and I T start typing my name and it says to me do you just want me to autofill all of this information and I go yes please and then I carry on that's been around for a little while what's the differences from a customer perspective and uh, from a business perspective question to both of you about where we're going in the next five years sure so um I guess I have a little bit different perspective so we are Fortegra is a delegated authority underwriter which means we aren't dealing directly with a consumer so we don't have that consumer journey through our systems where we're trying to enable some sort of seamless process of like buying an individual policy or you know submitting a claim or something like that so for us what i see is seamless and where i see ai and general data science tools being more deeply integrated and helpful is the is 
greasing the communication wheels between all the various constituents that, ha that are part of these very complex transactions. So there's an insured somewhere, whether it's a business or a person that's got a policy, all the way through like every reinsurer that's on some stack of reinsurance at the back end of our, of our programs. And so each of those people has a system, whether it's like your desktop computer, through an MGA's like policy issuance system, through a carrier system that's, you know, recording the transactions and dealing with claims. And, and each of those don't talk to each other today very effectively. We have these border road processes sending data around. And I think as AI becomes more accessible, which is one of the big differences that I think will happen over the next five years, it'll become more accessible to a less skilled, less technical set of users. And so MGAs don't typically have giant data science teams and IT staff. So it's harder to use the data science tools as they exist today. Maybe they'll start to engage with tools um, that have the same level of sophistication that the data scientists can use today within their own systems and stack or their software providers will, will help them access it, which will then allow us to communicate more effectively across that whole string of systems and data flow. And that means better data for all of us. That means maybe capturing more data for all of us, which means we can all do our job better. Like it's beneficial to the whole chain. If we all have better insight and, and better data to make our decisions and we can power each of those little modular data science tools at that point with better data, like we get better outcomes from the insured all the way through the reinsurer, especially hopefully for our MGAs as our customers. I think that's the most obvious thing that will get better is like the, more people being able to access, more firms being able to access those tools. I also think it'll become in, within a data science team, and Eleanor probably deals with this on a daily basis as well. I think the job of a data scientist is shifting. The sort of ivory tower data science work where you're building wholly new technologies to solve some problem with like unstructured data or really messy complex data or you know, is not going to be the job of individual data science teams sitting within an insurance company or an MGA. It's going like you're going to access the right tools and you're going to have to do a little bit more sort of engineering to use those tools appropriately, appropriately within your stack, within your software solution that's interacting with the outside world. You're not going to build your own LLM, your own large language model like chat GPT or Llama or, or pick your flavor. You're going to have to know how to use those tools effectively engineer for them and maybe support it with some more classical data, uh, data science and machine learning around the sides to feed it with the right data. But the really complex data science work will be handled by tools built at really large firms that have sort of unlimited budgets and unlimited data to build these things. And that's probably not individual players, individual players within the insurance space. Um, certainly not us with it at Fortegra. So we're just going to leverage the best in breed tools. And I think you'll see more of that focus within a data science team. And I think you'll see more ability for smaller data science team or less technical teams to access those tools as we go on in the next five years. It's really interesting what you said about um, kind of the model, the model building process. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's so easy to just take an LLM off the shelf um, and incorporate it into your workflow. But I guess where LexisNexis is kind of coming from is, is from a, a data standpoint. So we have all of this data about insurance customers in the UK, right? So we can tell you about their policy history. Um, we can tell you about the vehicles that they're driving. So we can tell you, um, Sarah, Sarah is now going on cover with an electric vehicle uh, now, but she has never actually driven an electric vehicle before. And we know that customers like that are potentially more likely to claim in the future. Um, so I guess we have all of this data that we're sitting on that can actually feed in to these off the shelf models. Um, so it, it's really easy then for insurers, right? Because they can get this really high quality data. They can get the off the shelf models and then, hey, presto, you know, they've got really great outcomes both for themselves and for their customers. I can't even begin to think about the brains behind uh, all of this stuff, you know, when you're talking about the difference between data science role now and perhaps in five or 10 years 
the level of um, the level of intelligence and understanding for this kind of stuff that sits behind that is far far beyond me. Um, I I think what would be quite interesting to from your perspective, what will businesses and brokers need to be thinking about now? Um, so that they can best utilize this. And I think, Joe, you've mentioned it, it's, you know, the big unlimited budgets are going to be the ones that, that that roll this. And we've just got to know how to be able to use it. So the most important thing with data science is, is in the name. It's data. Like, even if you have access to all these great new tools that are coming to the market, um, which we keep referring to, like the LLMs, and then there's there are computer vision, like imagery tools of this, you know, that do the same thing. And you can do, you know, like, you know, geospatial analysis with these tools. But if you don't have data that you trust, that's organized in a way that's like useful or easy for, for folks to, to access, whether within your firm or if you're trying to work <clears throat> across firms, that's going to materially inhibit your ability to use the tools. They do not know anything about your particular business about your customers, about your software, about your decision without an input. Um, and the better the input, the better decision tools that you're going to get, the better automations you're going to get. Um, and so you have to start thinking about every interaction as an opportunity to collect data. And you have to think about every opportunity to collect data as an opportunity to get higher resolution data. So, you know, getting a PDF with a bunch of information on it, it's okay. That is a way to store data and you can have a document database full of PDFs. But when it comes time to use that data, a data scientist on Eleanor's team or my team is going to come to you and say, well, we're going to have to go process these. Um, now you can use LLMs to pro process PDFs and there's other ways, maybe less expensive ways to process them as well. But you're going to have to take a pre-step, then you are gonna have to understand all that data, to organize it, and then you might be able to feed it in to some sort of tool to help make a decision or power a chat bot or make a forecast or what have you. And so if there's one thing you can think about as a firm, it's treating every interaction as an opportunity to collect data to make those opportunities real for you later on. And even if you don't see a direct use for it today, it doesn't mean you won't have a use for it tomorrow. And you can. it's really hard to go back and collect data about history. Um, if you didn't catch it up front. And so just thinking through that, and I think the insurance industry as a whole is not good because there's so many steps in that chain of the insured all the way through reinsurance where everyone's just doing the bare minimum to have a, to have a fast transaction to get, you know, to get the policy bound, to move it on in the process. And we might want to just make sure we enable each of those processes as an industry with better data capture and, and, you know, in my my opinion, a little bit more structured. Let's get away from just storing everything as a PDF. It just makes everybody's job a little bit messy on the on the back end, and and we'd like structured data. I just want to say thank you both to you very much. I've learned a lot. Um, I think if anybody's listening that have any additional questions, please get in touch with Bieber or Eleanor or Joe or myself, and we'll do our best to help. And um, thank you guys. I think you're both incredibly intelligent humans, and and we can learn a lot from you. Thank you, Sarah. Very excited to be at Biba. Look forward to meeting folks. Thanks Absolutely. so much. Cheers. Thank Thanks, you so guys. much. Take care. Bye. Bye, bye bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to hear more, please click on the subscribe button on your chosen streaming platform and follow us on our socials, including YouTube. We hope to see you at conference in Manchester on the 15th and 16th of May. If you have any questions at all, you can find out where to contact us on Bieber Conference at bieberconference.org.uk forward slash contact.